Fallacy, Wikipedia Audio A fallacy is the use of invalid or otherwise faulty reasoning, or wrong moves in the construction of an argument. A fallacious argument may be deceptive by appearing to be better than it really is. Some fallacies are committed intentionally to manipulate or persuade by deception, while others are committed unintentionally due to carelessness or ignorance. The soundness of legal arguments depends on the context in which the arguments are made. Fallacies are commonly divided into formal and informal. A formal fallacy can be expressed neatly in a standard system of logic, such as propositional logic, while an informal fallacy originates in an error in reasoning other than an improper logical form. Arguments containing informal fallacies may be formally valid, but still fallacious. Fallacies are defects that weaken arguments. Fallacious arguments are very common and can be persuasive in common use. They may be even unsubstantiated assertions that are often delivered with a conviction that makes them sound as though they are proven facts. Informal fallacies in particular are found frequently in mass media such as television and newspapers. It is important to understand what fallacies are so that one can recognize them in either his own or others' writing. Avoiding fallacies will strengthen one's ability to produce strong arguments. Overview It can be difficult to evaluate whether an argument is fallacious, as arguments exist along a continuum of soundness and an argument that has several stages or parts might have some sound sections and some fallacious ones. Because of their variety of structure and application, fallacies are challenging to classify so as to satisfy all practitioners. Fallacies can be classified strictly by either their structure or content, such as classifying them as formal fallacies or informal fallacies, respectively. The classification of informal fallacies may be subdivided into categories such as linguistic, relevance through omission, relevance through intrusion, and relevance through presumption. On the other hand, fallacies may be classified by the process by which they occur such as material fallacies, verbal fallacies, and again formal fallacies. In turn, material fallacies may be placed into the more general category of informal fallacies. Yet, verbal fallacies may be placed in either formal or informal classifications, compare equivocation which is a word or phrase based ambiguity, e.g. He is mad which may refer to either him being angry or clinically insane, to the fallacy of composition which is premise and inference-based ambiguity, e.g. This must be a good basketball team because each of its members is an outstanding player. Anti-pattern, association fallacy, cogency, cognitive bias, cognitive distortion, demagogue, evidence, fallacies of definition, false premise, false statement, invalid proof, jumping to conclusions, mathematical fallacy, paradox, prosecutor's fallacy, sophism, soundness, lies, damned lies, and statistics, truth, validity, victim blaming. Even the definitions of the classes may not be unique. For example, Whateley treats material fallacies as a complement to logical fallacies, which makes them synonymous to informal fallacies, while others consider them to be a subclass of informal fallacies, like mentioned above. Aristotle was the first to systematize logical errors into a list, as being able to refute an opponent's thesis is one way of winning an argument. Aristotle's sophistical refutations identifies 13 fallacies. He divided them up into two major types, linguistic fallacies and non-linguistic fallacies, some depending on language and others that do not depend on language. 
These fallacies are called verbal fallacies and material fallacies, respectively. A material fallacy is an error in what the arguer is talking about, while a verbal fallacy is an error in how the arguer is talking. Verbal fallacies are those in which a conclusion is obtained by improper or ambiguous use of words. An example of a language-dependent fallacy is given as a debate as to who amongst humanity are learners, the wise or the ignorant. A language-independent fallacy is for example. Richard Whateley defines a fallacy broadly as, any argument, or apparent argument, which professes to be decisive of the matter at hand, while in reality it is not. Whateley divided fallacies into two groups, logical and material. According to Whateley, logical fallacies are arguments where the conclusion does not follow from the premises. Material fallacies are not logical errors because the conclusion does follow from the premises. He then divided the logical group into two groups, purely logical and semi-logical. The semi-logical group included all of Aristotle's sophisms except, ignoratio elenchi, petitio principii, and non causa pro causa, which are in the material group. Of other classifications of fallacies in general the most famous are those of Francis Bacon and J. S. Mill. Bacon divided fallacies into four idola, which summarize the various kinds of mistakes to which the human intellect is prone. With these should be compared the Offendicula of Roger Bacon, contained in the Opus Maus, P.T.I.J.S. Mill discussed the subject in Book V of his Logic, and Jeremy Bentham's Book of Fallacies contains valuable remarks. C.R.D. Watili's Logic BKV, Ada Morgan, Formal Logic, A. Sidgwick, Fallacies, and Other Textbooks. Attacking Faulty Reasoning, Straight and Crooked Thinking, Why I Do Not Attend Case Conferences. A formal fallacy, deductive fallacy, or logical fallacy is a flaw in the structure of a deductive argument which renders the argument invalid. The flaw can neatly be expressed in standard system of logic. Such an argument is always considered to be wrong. The presence of the formal fallacy does not imply anything about the argument's premises or its conclusion. Both may actually be true, or may even be more probable as a result of the argument, but the deductive argument is still invalid because the conclusion does not follow from the premises in the manner described. By extension, an argument can contain a formal fallacy even if the argument is not a deductive one, for instance, an inductive argument that incorrectly applies principles of probability or causality can be said to commit a formal fallacy. Aristotle on sophistical refutations, de sophistici elenchi. Library.adelaide.edu.o, William of Ockham, Summa of Logic Part 3.4, John Buridan, Summulita Dialectica Book 7, Francis Bacon, The Doctrine of the Idols in Novum Organum Scientiarum, Aphorisms Concerning the Interpretation of Nature and the Kingdom of Man, XXIIIFF. Fly.hiyi.net, Arthur Schopenhauer, The Art of Controversy Die Kunst, Recht Ziebe Halton, The Art of Controversy. Gutenberg.net, John Stuart Mill, A System of Logic, Ratio Senative and Inductive. Book 5, Chapter 7, Fallacies of Confusion. LA.utexas.edu Systems of Classification A logical form such as A and B is independent of any particular conjunction of meaningful propositions. Logical form alone can guarantee that given true premises, a true conclusion must follow. However, 
formal logic makes no such guarantee if any premise is false, the conclusion can be either true or false. Any formal error or logical fallacy similarly invalidates the deductive guarantee. Both the argument and all its premises must be true for a statement to be true. The term logical fallacy is in a sense self-contradictory, because logic refers to valid reasoning, whereas a fallacy is the use of poor reasoning. Therefore the term formal fallacy is preferred. However, the same terms are used in informal discourse to mean an argument which is problematic for any reason. An ecological fallacy is committed when one draws an inference from data based on the premise that qualities observed for groups necessarily hold for individuals, for example, if countries with more Protestants tend to have higher suicide rates, then Protestants must be more likely to commit suicide. An informal fallacy is an argument, which may have a valid logical form and yet fail to be sound because one or more of its premises are false. The fallacies of relevance are a broad class of informal fallacies, generically represented by missing the point, presenting an argument, which may be sound, but fails to address the issue in question. An argument from silence features an unwarranted conclusion advanced based on the absence of data. Hasty generalization is making assumptions about a whole group or range of cases based on a sample that is inadequate. Stereotypes about people are a common example of the principle. Aristotle Hwaitley's Grouping this fallacy gets its name from the Latin phrase post hoc, ergo proter hoc, which translates as after this, therefore because of this. Definition, assuming that because B comes after A, A caused B. Sometimes one event really does cause another one that comes later for example, if I register for a class, and my name later appears on the roll. It's true that the first event caused the one that came later. But sometimes two events that seem related in time aren't really related as cause and event. That is, correlation isn't the same thing as causation. Other systems of classification Formal fallacy Common examples Ecological fallacy Informal fallacy Definition, the arguer claims that a sort of chain reaction, usually ending in some dire consequence, will take place, but there's really not enough evidence for that assumption. The arguer asserts that if we take even one step onto the slippery slope, we will end up sliding all the way to the bottom, he or she assumes we can't stop halfway down the hill. This error in reasoning occurs when claims are supported by unsound comparisons, hence the false analogy s informal nickname of the apples and oranges fallacy. Some of the fallacies described above may be committed in the context of measurement. Where mathematical fallacies are subtle mistakes in reasoning leading to invalid mathematical proofs. Measurement fallacies are unwarranted inferential leaps involved in the extrapolation of raw data to a measurement-based value claim. The ancient Greek sophist Protagoras was one of the first thinkers to propose that humans can generate reliable measurements through his human measure principle and the practice of dyswalogoi. This history helps explain why measurement fallacies are informed by informal logic and argumentation theory. Relevance fallacy Increasing availability and circulation of big data are driving proliferation of new metrics for scholarly authority, and there is lively discussion regarding the relative usefulness of such metrics for measuring the value of knowledge production in the context of an information tsunami. For example, Anchoring fallacies can occur when unwarranted weight is given to data generated by metrics that the arguers themselves acknowledge is flawed. 
For example, limitations of the journal impact factor are well documented, and even GIF pioneer Eugene Garfield notes, while citation data create new tools for analyses of research performance, it should be stressed that they supplement rather than replace other quantitative and qualitative indicators. To the extent that arguers jettison acknowledged limitations of GIF generated data in evaluative judgments, or leave behind Garfield's supplement rather than replace caveat, they court commission of anchoring fallacies. A naturalistic fallacy can occur for example in the case of sheer quantity metrics based on the premise more is better or, in the case of developmental assessment in the field of psychology, higher is better. A false analogy occurs when claims are supported by unsound comparisons between data points. For example, the Scopus and Web of Science bibliographic databases have difficulty distinguishing between citations of scholarly work that are arm's-length endorsements, ceremonial citations, or negative citations. Hence, Measurement-based value claims premised on the uniform quality of all citations may be questioned on false analogy grounds. For the next example let us consider Academic Analytics Faculty Scholarly Productivity Index, which purports to measure overall faculty productivity, yet the tool does not capture data based on citations in books. This creates a possibility that low productivity measurements using the tool may constitute argument from silence fallacies, to the extent that such measurements are supported by the absence of book citation data. Ecological fallacies can be committed when one measures scholarly productivity of a subgroup of individuals via reference to aggregate data about a larger and different group. Sometimes a speaker or writer uses a fallacy intentionally. In any context, including academic debate, a conversation among friends, political discourse, advertising, or for comedic purposes, the arguer may use fallacious reasoning to try to persuade the listener or reader, by means other than offering relevant evidence, that the conclusion is true. Argumentum ex silentio Examples of this include the speaker or writer. In humor, errors of reasoning are used for comical purposes. Groucho Marx used fallacies of amphiboly, for instance, to make ironic statements, Gary Larson and Scott Adams employed fallacious reasoning in many of their cartoons. Wes Boyer and Samuel Stoddard have written a humorous essay teaching students how to be persuasive by means of a whole host of informal and formal fallacies. Examples of informal fallacies According to the pragmatic theory, a fallacy can in some instances be an error of fallacy, use of a heuristic to jump to a conclusion. However, even more worryingly, in other instances it is a tactic or ploy used inappropriately in argumentation to try to get the best of a speech part unfairly. There are always two parties to an argument containing a fallacy the perpetrator and the intended victim. The dialogue framework required to support the pragmatic theory of fallacy is built on the presumption that argumentative dialogue has both an adversarial component and a collaborative component. A dialogue has individual goals for each participant, but also collective goals that apply to all participants. A fallacy of the second kind is seen as more than simply violation of a rule of reasonable dialogue. It is also a deceptive tactic of argumentation, based on sleight of hand. Aristotle explicitly compared contentious reasoning to unfair fighting in athletic contest. But the roots of the pragmatic theory go back even further in history to the sophists. The pragmatic theory finds its roots in the Aristotelian conception of a fallacy as a sophistical refutation, 
but also supports the view that many of the types of arguments traditionally labeled as fallacies are in fact reasonable techniques of argumentation that can be used, in many cases, to support legitimate goals of dialogue. Hence on the pragmatic approach, each case needs to analyzed individually, to determine by the textual evidence whether the argument is fallacious or reasonable. Concepts Hasty generalization Post hoc Slippery slope Works Historical texts False analogy Measurement fallacy Knowledge value measurement fallacy Intentional fallacy Assessment pragmatic theory